Broadcasting across the internet, this is an Unshackled live stream. Brought to you by the Unshackled.net. Now, here's the Unshackled team. Hello and welcome to the Unshackled's 2018 Budget Night uh, live stream. You're here with Editor-in-Chief uh, Tim Wilms and also uh, joining me is Political Editor Michael Smythe. Hi Tim. Uh, now there'll be quite a few people who uh, are watching this and say, hey, I didn't know anything about this uh, live stream, but we actually decided to do it uh, last night when we were recording the, the weekly podcast. It was sort of like, it's something we should do, so hell yeah, why not? Mm, indeed. Now I've been talking with a few people today actually, and they've been very, very skeptical about the budget as we were and as we are. Uh, one friend of mine, an economist, has commented to me very glibly about how news.com was reporting tonight's tax cuts as burger and milkshake cuts. I myself wrote a very cynical status on my Facebook and saying, what did I say exactly? Oh yeah, something about, oh, we might be able to afford an extra Happy Meal a week was my, um, was my cynical comment. But let's get down to the nitty gritty of the more crucial aspects. Yes, yeah, so now we haven't had the benefit of a six hour uh, budget lockup like the, the journos at Sky News and ABC had. So pretty much done a, a crash or reading of all the, the, the budget figures to, uh, to put together our analysis in the last half hour. Mm. Those figures that we could actually find because when I looked at the site an hour ago, because I was listening to the budget on TV, I've actually still got the TV on in the background, as some of you can see. Uh, I was reading the script, um, the, yeah, the transcript of ScoMo's speech, and I was also looking at, or trying rather, to look at the um, the estimates, the minister statements and such and such like that i actually got more from the guardian of all places than i did from the website it just redirected to budget.gov.au now sorry go on uh, uh, i didn't actually go to the the, the the budget website well i was glued to uh, uh sky news to to, wa uh, to watch the speech and then uh the abc given that we give it over a billion dollars of taxpayers money this year was able to produce some nice flashy graphics which talked about who the budget winners and losers were mm. the australian has also done uh, a quick article on winners and losers as well which where they're actually suggesting and i think there's a little bit of schadenfreude on the part of Sid Ma, who is the New South Wales editor, pointing out that the ABC would actually lose a little bit of money. Um, speaking of the ABC, ABC operational funding to be frozen to ensure it continues to find back office efficiencies, freezes to save $83.7 million over three years from 2019-20 to 21-22. Ooh, big uh. saving. What a, what a shame, but I've just learned that Tonightly's been renewed for another season, so they're not going to cut that. <laughs> she... you said Lee, right? I said Tonightly. Oh, Tonightly. Oh, yeah. goodness. Now, that's the first thing I should get rid of, but, you know, who am I? It's That's none of my business, is it? Ah. But um, I, thought you, I thought you were talking about Lee Sales for a second then um she was interviewing uh both scott morrison and chris bowen the shadow treasurer before and she was you know credit to her she was actually hard on even on chris bowen she was a lot harder on scott morrison but she was also somewhat harsh on um bowen as well so that's something i don't mind lay i really don't mm -hmm. well yeah, well, uh, well, that's. Uh, we're that's going how they to are. some uh, cold hard figures now. Now, Scott Morrison has set the target of uh, 23.9% of uh, tax to, to GDP, so it'll be no more than that. And has also set a target of uh, that all uh, once we get back into surplus. If we do, that's a whole another question. Uh, will be surpluses will be 0.5% of. Uh, 
uh, GDP. And so we'll reach this uh, surplus in 2019-20 of 2.2 billion. So uh, it's a wafer thin uh, surplus. And then uh, we get into the, the, the goodies, which uh, because it's well, an election in the next year. So the, uh, the top uh, medium uh, income tax uh, racket is being uh, raised from 87,000 to 90,000. And that's mm -hmm. being reduced uh, from 37% marginal tax rate to 32.5%. So that's a pretty substantial uh, cut. And the uh, lower middle of uh, 37,000 uh, or more, that's being raised to uh, 41,000, I believe. Mm. That's right, 41,000. It should be noted as well, Tim, that the expend that the reduction from 37 cents in the dollar to 32 and a half cents in the dollar is going to be delayed for a couple of years until we get back into balance, let alone surplus, because the the coalition themselves realize that if they give everyone a tax cut, it's probably not going to have as much of a benefit to the economy as just giving more money to the lower and middle earners. They did mention something about uh, increasing the low income tax offset as well, which you alluded to with the um, the remark about the tax, the um, 41,000 being the, um, <clears throat> pardon me, the bottom, um, the bottom tax bracket. What they're basically looking at, there are going to be only three tax brackets left in a few years. Um, the, was a 17, 17, um, 32.5 and 45. And 45 is going to be limited to people who earn over $200,000. There's already some good uh, comments that in, in the chat. Uh, Sonia's uh, got, got a lot to say about yeah, the um, uh, the farmers. That say uh, they're always an important important con consideration. There wasn't too much uh, uh, about agriculture in the in, in the budget. I mean, the ABC they actually had uh, rural and regional Australia as a neutral. Hmm. Well, it doesn't seem like they've done anything um, particularly positive or negative for the farmers in this budget, uh, at least not from what I could see in the speech. I mean, there are other papers that I couldn't access yet, obviously. I couldn't access the strategy and outlook, the measures, the um, the budget papers, which I'll send a link to you. Um, they didn't come up until, uh, they still haven't come up as far as I'm aware. But it doesn't seem that in the speech, I don't recall seeing anything about farmers. Mm. Oh, anyway. I, sorry, I lied. There was one thing. We're backing farmers to create more jobs. They're basically going to give them uh, additional funding to protect against um, pestilence and weeds um, and improving biosecurity, which is essential, although it should be noted as well that the federal government can't do that on its own. The federal government should also be tapping the states on the shoulders and saying, look, you guys need to improve your biosecurity as well. We can't do it all on our own. And uh, the, what we talked about on the most recent episode of Waves, the uh, lobbying to increase the, the New Start uh, unemployment uh, benefit, uh, that didn't happen uh, in the budget. There's no increase. And there's also going to be a crackdown uh, on uh, people who are uh, receiving welfare, who are earning too much, there's going to be some sort of matching technology where the ATO is going to match with settling people's uh, income. So it's another convoluted welfare crackdown. Oh yeah, that's just expanding what they've already been doing for several years. They've been, they're, the ATO and Centrelink, or sorry, the Department of Human Services, as they're, as they're technically called. They've been doing data matching for quite a while. This is just a boost to ensure that it's more than just random checks. Yeah, so um, we didn't see much change in that regard. There was uh, superannuation. They, they're kind of trying to, to get back the people they pissed off a couple of 
uh, years ago with uh, with those tinkering with the, the superannuation taxes. It's now going to be uh, easier to change uh, uh, superannuation companies with no exit fees and fees are going to be uh, capped and there's also going to be, speaking of uh, elderly uh, people, there's a new uh, aged care uh, package as well and there's going to be all sorts of flexible arrangements for pensioners as well. Mm -hmm. That's right. There was something about uh, an exemption for uh, people between 65 and 70 looking for um, looking for work and or being able to keep more of their pension payment if they do um, if they do if they could keep an extra fifty dollars a fortnight or something. I was just looking at that before. Ah, here we go. Uh, ah, pensions loan scheme. That's another thing. Um, will be open to all older Australians, including full rate pensioners and self-funded retirees, so they can boost their retirement income by up to 17800 for a couple without impacting on the eligibility for the pension or other benefits. I know at least one economist, you might know him as well, actually, Tim, our friend John Humphreys might not be particularly happy with that, but that's another conversation for another time. Uh, here we go. An expanded pension work bonus will allow pensioners to earn an extra 1300 a year without reducing their pension payments. And, oh, hello. So for the first time, the bonus will be extended to self-employed individuals who can now, now earn up to 7800 per year. Now, before we go on, Tim, I have to say something again. This is really bugging me. I don't see, even if you factor in the 30-odd billion dollar windfall that the economy has had and that our, rev our government revenues have had over the past 12 months, ha almost half of it which they're giving back to us in tax cuts anyway, I don't see how they can afford some of the expenditures that they are wanting to increase. I mean, don't get me wrong, I love the idea of infrastructure spending, $25 billion or thereabouts on infrastructure. Yeah. That's a good thing in my books, but I don't see how they're going to be able to do that and retain the AAA credit rating, which has been retained across all three major credit rating agencies, one of only 10 countries in the world. To be fair, they've done surprisingly well for now and how they're going to actually get to the projected surpluses because the projected surplus of $2.2 in 2019-20 that sounds, it sounds achievable. Yeah. But the uh, ones that come next do not. Yeah, that, that, that's what a lot of commentators have been saying tonight. Well, we believe that we're closer to a surplus uh, than when Wayne Swan told us in that we'd reached a surplus uh, uh, in 2012, 2013. Even uh, Peter Credlin on Sky News, who's known for being uh, cynical, she said that, yeah, the, these uh, f uh, treasury figures are actually uh, quite solid. So yeah, we're, we're right to be skeptical because there's been uh, so, so many letdowns and yeah, they um, uh, obviously they have been criticised, the federal government, by us and uh, last night by uh, Peter Costello uh, and by uh, John Hewson uh, today uh, saying that there, there's not, not enough being done to uh, retire the debt. Uh, Peter Costello said he'll probably be dead uh, before uh, the, the debts uh, completely paid off and uh, John Hewson called it uh, uh, the, the the mother of all political budgets. Uh, did he just assume the budget's gender? <laughs> but John Hewson... He's, he's not he's, wrong, though. Yeah, he's not he, wrong, though. I mean, he, the budget he, is he's very... Still, he's still better. very salty, though, John Hewson, so he's sort of got to um, take what he says with the, the bit of... Uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> No, but to be fair, Houston's Houston has a point. I mean, every every budget has a political bent and agenda, somewhat. But this one is still well. How do we? How did we, someone put it the other week? A Santa Claus budget is still somewhat of a Santa Claus budget. I mean, it's a skinny Santa Claus budget, but it's still a Santa Claus budget nonetheless. This is a pitch at the lower and middle income earners as well as um social welfare recipients as well but that's the other thing they haven't been living they're not living within their means they're saying they're living within their means but they're really not 
uh, they've got lucky. I mean, th that's uh, 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 that's what you can put it down to. I mean, they're able to have this type of budget where there's a bit of tax cut cut here, there's a, a bit of uh, sp uh, spending here, and and we're going to get the the, the surplus uh, next year. It's because yeah, conditions are good at the moment, and that's when the time when we should exactly be paying down the debt because we don't know uh, what's around the corner in a in a year or two and you definitely don't want to lock in too many uh, spending items because you know that they can't be changed down the road once you introduce say a program or uh, or uh, some type of funding it's very hard to rein it back in i mean uh, the coalition for the past five years has been locked into the Gonski and NDIS and that was another thing Scott Morrison was keen to promote tonight uh, a record of spend, uh, spending on schools mm -hmm. the main thing that he was focusing on especially after the absolute shellacking he copped in the media last week after telling off Michael McCormack is the whole um the whole uh, ndis thing and he was he took great pains tonight to emphasize that that was indeed still going to be looked after but in regards to gonski he has actually put in his budget speech declared that there will be an extra 24 and a half billion dollars over the next 10 years now that now if you average that out it's only 2.45 billion a year but it's still pretty good all things considered so you know if they figure out how to spend it properly then it could work but you've got to remember every state is different and throwing money at schools is not going to mean anything if the state curriculum is woefully inadequate yeah uh, I mean, exactly. I, I like to know where all this extra funding goes. I, I mean, it gets absorbed somewhere, but yet the, the never-ending uh, story is uh, the teachers are not paid well enough, uh, the school, uh, school demountables don't have uh, air conditioning. Uh, it, it, it just seems to create more bureaucracy. We're never, we're never actually told, see, this is where your money went. Hmm. Yeah, that's pretty much it. There is very little accountability in regards to um, when you get to uh, you look at the figures that have been invested in, but you don't see how they're actually expended on the ground in a lot of cases. Most of the time they actually fund it through states and then the states also put it through churn and then it ends up disappearing. Teachers are still underpaid and students still don't achieve as nearly as much as they should and that's sad now the uh, infrastructure spend there's uh, i think we mentioned this on the podcast uh last night there's a lot spent in uh, victoria because there's a, a state election coming up even uh my local area frankston got a shout out from spot morrison because they're extending the train line uh, uh down to down to Baxter and uh, but this is also an area of spending which has been criticized by conservatives such as Andrew Bolt saying that this is an example of the the immigration Ponzi scheme we bring in all these immigrants they they pay tax but then there's all this uh, congestion uh, out in the suburbs and so the government comes in as the hero and say oh, we'll fix the the, the problem uh, that we created hmm yes distracting us from the real the other problems as well excuse me and that was actually another thing i want to talk about uh as well now that you mentioned andrew bolt uh in regards to improve spending money on infrastructure to improve it to reduce bottlenecks and gridlocks but they also uh, um another area which which um triggered my memory after you mentioned andrew bolt was the fact that in this speech, he cited more than a million, or almost a million jobs, rather, have been created since September 2013 when the coalition uh, won power from Kevin Rudd's and what was Julia Gillard's Labor government, including 415,000 last year. He claims that three quarters of those jobs created last year are full time. But what the Treasurer has not 
uh, established here, and this is extremely important, what he is not established here is how many of those jobs are going to people who were here in the first place, how many people will have be taken these jobs as immigrants, because we have a very large immigration intake. And don't get me wrong, I have nothing wrong with immigration, but we have to look after our own people first. I mean, if we have an unemployment rate that is pretty damn high, relatively speaking, then we shouldn't be importing more people to take the jobs that we could just as easily do ourselves. So the 415,000 um, jobs created last year, three quarters of those, it's roughly, oh, let's see, it's about, let's say about 300,000 of those were full-time, supposedly, if the figures are correct. I mean, it's the Australian Bureau of Statistics, they're generally pretty good. So we can probably trust them on those figures. But, you know, 300,000 jobs created last year. We brought in 300,000 odd people, apparently. 200 or 300,000 odd people. The figures, actually, Paul Murray also did a thing on this. I have to look that up. Uh, so basically, even though we've created all these new jobs, the unemployment level has not really dropped that much. Yeah, that's why I can't stand the, the jobs and growth, you know, record a jobs growth, because the, 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 there was a quarter where unemployment actually went up. So yeah, yeah you're adding jobs because the population's increasing, but unemployment and in the budget projections tonight, it's still going to be around uh, 5%, which is a lot higher than what it was in the, the final days of the Howard government. Mm -hmm. Indeed, and it's the look. It, overall, we can safely say that the coalition has done better than Labor would, but that's not really hard. I mean, look at Wayne Swan; he was a dreadful treasurer. But even so, the coalition still has a lot of work to do, and I will probably sound like a broken record for saying this, Tim, but. Cutting welfare payments to non-citizens would be the easiest way to reducing or slashing our deficit. And then we could also afford more tax cuts. And we could also afford increasing uh, Centrelink payments if we needed to, which we haven't, which the government doesn't, has no intention of doing. Because why do that? Why take care of the people? <laughs> And there was also uh, a continuation of the, the small business uh, $20,000 uh, instant asset uh, write-off that, mm. uh, that, that was introduced as part of Joe Hockey's uh, makeup uh, budget in, in 2015. There, um, obviously, there wasn't much about uh, companies uh, per se because the, uh, the company tax cuts are currently politically a bit difficult uh, at the moment, so they were left out of the... Uh, the budget speech, but we know that uh, the Tamil government they would uh, like to get those through. But uh, as you as you can see, that they they tried to uh, try and neutralise labour on uh, trying to take care of uh, low and middle income earners. Mm. They try. They have actually. There was one other thing that they did, and it's towards the end of uh, Scott Morrison's speech. Um, talking about closing a loophole that was opened up by, well, he says it was by the right government and that gave foreign companies a tax break over Australian companies by t changing the tax treatment of stapled structures. But in general, the Australian economy does have some severe structural imbalances regardless of the window dressing that the coalition has been doing here. It's necessary window dressing, I grant you, but it's still window dressing nonetheless. And as much as I hate to agree with Lee Sales, while the coalition has been somewhat prudent in preparing for a return to better conditions, they have still gone lucky. I mean, if, in my opinion, I don't think we should be this lucky. I don't think the world economy should be this lucky. I think we have a massive bubble that's going to burst and well, it's not going to be pretty put that way. I don't think these conditions that are being projected, these surpluses that are being projected are going to be ever realised, at least not any time this decade. But maybe I'm just a cynic. 
Now, of course, the budget's been announced uh, tonight, but it's it's got to get through the, the Parliament, which also means the, the Senate, which means that the, the Labor Party, they'll, uh, Bill Shorten will give his uh, budget or reply on uh, Thursday evening. We'll know uh, what uh, are they, how they plan to react to the, the budget measures. Normally, oppositions, they, they, they don't try and play the, the record completely with the budget. They'll, they'll pass a lot of the uh, savings and uh, ta tax measures, but they'll, they, there'll be uh, a ship fight with regard to uh, some of the, the tax breaks to those in the higher uh, ta uh, tax brackets. Uh, Labor will want to uh, try, try and portray the coalition as looking after their own as, as much as possible. Mm, that's true. Although Bowen did grudgingly say tonight that they would back the tax cuts, so he didn't provide much information on anything else, even when Lee pressed him, but he has basically said, oh, just wait until Thursday night and you'll see our budget reply speech, blah, 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 blah. So it'll be interesting to see on Thursday night and Friday morning what the differences would be between Labor's plan, if they have one, which at this stage I don't think they do, and the Coalition's uh, budget that they've handed out tonight, handed down rather tonight. A lot of commentators, they've been saying that uh, Labor, they've played it uh, very well in the lead up to uh, the election period because the Bill Shorten's already announced all of their their nasties, uh, their, their tax increases, the, the dividend policy, uh, uh, re uh, repealing the, the company tax cuts. And so uh, come election time, he'll have uh, a nice uh, pot of uh, goodies to, to hand out to try and get elected. And uh, my, I would say, conclusion on this budget is that yeah, the coalition, they, they haven't done enough to, well, what their end goal is, is to get re-elected. And mm -hmm. uh, given that Turnbull said that the budget, uh, sorry, the election isn't going to be until uh, next year, most of this will be forgotten in a, in a, in a few months. I, I, I don't think that there's, there's enough to say they're economically responsible, there's, and there's certainly not enough to say that they're bribing the electorate. Mm hmm. Yeah. Well, even um, Laura, so Laura Tingle, Laura Tingle from yeah. the AFR, yeah, from the Fin Review. Even she was saying this is a surprise, is a surprising conservative budget for what should have been, what was being expected to be an election, uh, pre-election budget. I mean, it's possible that Temple's yanking all of our chains and he will actually have an election this year. It is possible. I mean, a lot of people have been suggesting that there will be an election around November or December anyway. But realistically speaking, there's not enough um, in this to justify calling it an election budget as well. I mean, it is so, yes, I, I know I said it was a Santa Claus budget, sort of, a skinny, skinny, skinny Santa Claus budget. But realistically speaking, it's you're right it's not going to be enough to convince people to re-elect them in of themselves the only chance the coalition has to in addition to this is to actually have really good economic conditions from around the rest of the world and with trump uh making a decision on the iran nuclear deal tomorrow there's going to be a lot of jitters overnight and that economic, the economic serendipity, which Australia has managed to enjoy over the past six to 12 months may be very much forgotten very quickly. Not to mention the fact there's still Brexit being negotiated painstakingly. The article I read about the House of Lords obstructing Brexit yet again, uh, more tensions in France, I mean, with the May Day riots that they had last week, and so forth and so forth. So it's 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 not looking as promising. I would like to be optimistic, like Scott Morrison, but I don't think he has. Well, the coalition has done enough to make it to really improve the lots of 
you know, the everyday working Australian. Well, we've reached our half an hour limit now. I think we've we've covered the what's in the budget um, uh, pretty well, <laughs> and uh, we've uh, managed with a half an hour uh, pre preparation. Is there any uh, final thoughts you wanted to add, Michael? Um, nothing that I can think of off the top of my head. The only thing that I could add is they 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 did okay. I was expecting it to be a lot worse. Actually, I was expecting them to to take a leaf out of Labor's book and start dr spending like drunken sailors, but they haven't quite done that yeah, yet. That's what it's perhaps the circumstances. Like. The leaks, Perhaps the circumstances. <laughs> yeah, also, sorry, but oh, sorry, you go. Yeah, I was, I was, ju I was just going to say the, the, the leaks that they made it look like this was going to be the, they were throwing the, the money from, uh, the airplane. <laughs> That's what it seemed like. Yeah, maybe that there could have been just red herrings just to throw, throw everyone off. Maybe that's what they'll be having in next year's budget, who knows? Well, thank you to uh, everyone who uh, watched on, on Facebook Live. Uh, as I said, we decided to do this at the, at the last minute, so I hope you enjoyed our uh, analysis. And um, if there are any other major upcoming events uh, in Australia or around the world, I should say, we will definitely uh, go live. Thanks for, for joining me, Michael, and uh, suggesting uh, this. And yeah, we'll definitely do this again sometime. Definitely. Thank you, Tim. This has been an Unshackled live stream. View all our previous live events at theunshackled.net forward slash live streams. While you're here, yeah, we'll grab our free ebook at theunshackledbattlefield.net and keep checking out theunshackled.net for all the latest news and commentary.